Are you really experiencing the best attraction to Disney? Or what everyone tells you are the best? We're headed all over Disney World to find the 33 of the best underrated rides here in Disney World. There is so much to see and do in all four parks in Disney World. Plus, two water parks, Disney Springs, and more. But oftentimes, you're gonna hear the Disney parks, your friends, and even your family talk about the biggest popular rides. You know, the ones you see in all the commercials. While those rides might be exciting and often pretty solid attractions, are they really the best attractions? Are they really worth the super long waits? Are there other attractions that make Disney, well, more Disney? I'm gonna check out as many as I can today and even talk about some underrated attractions that you submitted from home. Now the question really is, what makes something underrated? Uh, it means that it is still a really uh, great attraction, or I guess a worthwhile attraction, something that is definitely worth your time, worth an observation, worth a second glance at. Uh, that is often overlooked, which means we're definitely going to be skipping the popular rides today. We're, uh, you know, Rise the Resistance, not today. Seven Doors Mine Train, not today. Space Mountain, not today. This is the time to shine the spotlight on what I like to call filler attractions. What are filler attractions? Let's talk about it as we get into one of the, I think, the most underrated lands with the most underrated attractions here at Magic Kingdom, Tomorrowland. Filler attractions are basically uh, uh, rides, uh, experiences, shows that you're going to fill up your time with between those popular must-do attractions that you know you have on your must-do list. Filler attractions often have a lower wait time. They're not as crowded. They're not going to cause you as much anxiety. It's not going to take up a bulk of your time. But these filler attractions, I believe, are some of the best uh, experiences, attractions that Disney has to offer. Because as great as it is to hit all those high thrill attractions and to see all the uh, amazing new technology that Disney has to offer. Sitting back a little bit, smelling the roses, checking out some OG Disney attractions. You never know, could be your favorite part about traveling to Disney. We're immediately gonna get this one out of the way because y'all already know what it was about to be, the People Mover. The Tomorrowland People Mover, currently presented by Enterprise, is where you board an elevated train for a scenic tour around Tomorrowland featuring twinkling, starscapes, dark tunnels, and local destinations. It's basically a train around Tomorrowland where you're gonna uh, actually go inside some of the ride buildings uh, all over Tomorrowland so you actually get to go inside of Space Mountain you go around Carousel of Progress you even go inside of one of the stores for each of these 33 underrated attractions we're gonna give three reasons why these attractions are underrated reason number one it's underrated it's actually relaxing. It is a really smooth train ride all around Tomorrowland. The breeze is lovely. Uh, at some point, when you go inside of Space Mountain, it is complete darkness until you, you see, see the stars around you. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Reason number two it's underrated, it's almost always easy to get on. Finally, reason number three it's underrated, I love a ride that goes through other rides. You know how you feel when you're riding the monorail and the monorail goes through the contemporary? It's just like that. How do you pass that up. Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress, our next underrated attraction. The Carousel of Progress is a animatronic show all about a specific family who goes through different generations and how they operate uh, with the technological advances of all of those different generations. I mean, it goes back as far as, you know, when you got when you had to go to the well and you had to do the, the water pump. Just like that's how that's how you pump the water from the well. And then and then and then all the way to the future, present really, where they got talking ovens. Three reasons it's underrated, let's go. Reason number one, it is actually historic. The Carousel of Progress didn't start here in Disney World, didn't even start in Disneyland. It actually started at the 1964 World's Fair. GM, a, a, an attraction built for them to show how their appliances would, would, uh, would affect a family throughout the course of time uh, and even into the future. Walt Disney had a hand in making uh, the Carousel of Progress uh, and now uh, it's no longer Disneyland, but now this is the last remaining Carousel of Progress in the world. So the fact that Walt Disney himself helped create this, uh, he had a hand in this, it's very historic, and it's the only one left. Reason number two, it is actually a ride and a show. If you were to see a show and uh, there, there needs to be a revolving stage, the stage would revolve in a circle, right? But in this, the stage is not revolving. You are, you are revolving around the entire uh, theater. The entire theater spins and the stage is stationary. 
Back in the day, it was easier to move the people than it was to move all those heavy electronics and the wires and all that jazz. So they decided to move the people instead because family is 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 the rock, is the foundation, and you are rotating around time itself. I just I made that last part up. I hope, I hope I'm hoping that one makes makes sense. And reason number three, we could say, oh, it's indoors, they say, blah, blah, blah. Nah, I'm gonna say because of the song. Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow was written by the Sherman Brothers. You might know their uh, music. Uh, they wrote, It's a Small World. They wrote uh, the songs from Mary Poppins. They are, if, if, if it's a Disney song, that, that is, a, that is a earworm. I'm 98% sure the Sherman Brothers probably wrote it. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. I know you're taking it home now. Shining at the end of every day. Bow, bow. Clap those hands, hey, man. Man has a dream. Uh, that's a start. Astro Orbiter, baby. Astro Orbiter is a Dumbo-style attraction where you can circle high above Tomorrowland aboard a futuristic spaceship. Now, let's talk about Astro Orbiter for a second because it is, is it a Dumbo-style attraction? Is it just a ride vehicle that goes up and spins around? Yes. But is it as chill and family-friendly as a Dumbo-style attraction? I don't think so, and Emma certainly doesn't either. Let's talk about the three reasons why it is underrated. This attraction is surprisingly thrilling. Yes, is it a Dumbo-style attraction that goes up and spins around? Yes. But it is actually high above Tomorrowland, and you're surprisingly going uh, pretty fast. For in Dumbo or the Magic Carpets of Aladdin, I don't necessarily feel like I'm being pinned against the side of the ride vehicle. It is surprisingly thrilling for a attraction that spins around. Reason number two, the views are absolutely gorgeous. Because it's one of the highest places you can go here in Tomorrowland, you can see all of Magic Kingdom, some backstage areas, and some uh, really unique, exciting views. This is really leading up to reason number three, why I think it's the most underrated. This is more of a tip than anything else, is that if you can time it out right, my favorite place to watch the fireworks from is Astro Orbiter. You are, the, you are physically the closest like high in the sky that you can be while there are actual fireworks going off. Tomorrowland Speedway. Tomorrowland Speedway is where you can board your very own car. Yes, it is a car that you are driving. It's a go-kart of sorts. Uh, and you race around a Tomorrowland racetrack. For all my Disneylanders out there, this is, uh, you know, Disney World's version of Autopia. Reason number one, your kids can actually drive. Now, obviously, depending on height and age, they can't be alone in the car by themselves, but they can steer while you uh, push the gas. So this is a really cool uh, family experience to do together. For example, you know, you put your kid in the seat next to you, and you're like, go ahead, drive. Mm -hmm. Remember that time Daddy was screaming uh, in the middle of I-4? Yeah, remember this moment, young one. Remember it. So now don't worry, it is extremely easy for them to steer because it is a lined track. So they cannot get off their track, they cannot pass each other. Reason number two, the viewing area. Now technically, this is not a part of the attraction itself because I know there are many people in many different families who, one, probably don't want to ride this attraction, which is either too loud or the cars are too low to the ground, or it's too uncomfortable, or the seats are too hot, I get it. But if you find the exit of the attraction, you're gonna walk up these stairs, and you're gonna find the viewing area, and that's where you can uh, hang out for a hot second. You can see your family, or whoever is uh, in your party who is actually getting in one of the cars, you can see them take off from their station and return. Reason number three this is underrated is because of the holiday overlays. During Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, uh, they actually uh, decorate the racetrack with oversized Christmas ornaments, Christmas trees, they play Christmas music, uh, Christmas lights everywhere. So definitely riding this at night during the holidays, uh, during the Very Merry Christmas Party, uh, it's a really fun addition. Now this next one might come off as a shocker, as a surprise. Ah! That was me being shocked. Our next underrated attraction in our list of 33 is the Mad Tea Party. Why? I'll tell you. The Mad Tea Party is a teacup style attraction where you uh, literally get into a teacup and you control how fast your teacup spins as the entire turntable spins around you. So you've got a double spinning action. Reasons why it's underrated. Number one, guys, this is a classic Disney attraction. Like, 
You want to feel the magic of Disney? You you get on a, a teacup ride. Pretend like you're in one of the commercials and you're nine years old. I'm having the best time. Reason number two, it is definitely a choose your own adventure. There's a metal plate in the middle of the teacup where depending on how quickly you turn it, that's how quickly your teacup spins around. In fact, uh, we even did a world record challenge and you can find that uh, video up on the channel now where we competed to see how many times we could go around in a full circle. I, don't, I think Emma got like a ridiculous amount. I don't know how she got as many as she did, but you gotta go check out the video. Reason number three, and this is a big one for me, it's always a short wait time. Unless it's a huge, crazy busy day, uh, typically it's about a five to 10 minute wait and you can't pass that up. All the rides that I've just talked about so far, none of these you would use with Genie Plus. You can find Genie on the My Disney Experience app. And there are three different versions. The first one is the free genie. And that is basically a suggested itinerary for the day. It'll say things like, hey, right now is a short wait for Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid. So you might want to go ride that one. But in 20 minutes, Dumbo's going to be a short wait. So maybe go ride that one. It's all suggested and it's all free. The second one is going to be the one we talk about the most. It's the most popular option. It's your pay to skip the line uh, service. And that is Genie Plus. Now, in order to pay the skip the line, it is a date-based fee depending on how busy the parks are. We've seen it anywhere from $15 to $35. And you can pay for individual parks or multiple parks depending on what your plan is that day. And skip the line with Genie Plus works for most attractions at Disney World because that leads us to our third option, which is individual lightning lane. And that's the additional fee on top of Genie Plus that you pay to skip the lines for the, uh, for the big heavy hitters, the e-ticket attractions. We're talking the super popular must-do attractions on everyone's list. Because we have finally made it to our next underrated attraction, one of my favorite attractions, and actually a must-do for me, it's the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Is that a hot take? Probably. But it's worth it, and I'll tell you why. Reason number one, classic Disney dark ride. Disney is known for its storytelling, whereas Universal is known for its thrills, right? And dating all the way back to the beginning of Disneyland, Disney would put you in a ride vehicle and take you through this show building on a slow moving dark ride in order to convey whatever story it was trying to tell. And there's, you'll see different versions of this all over the park, the nostalgia. Wherever you are, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you uh, grew up with Winnie the Pooh in some capacity. Yes, a lot of you, that's right, because Winnie the Pooh has been around for a long time. The nostalgia of the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh, it spans decades, uh, generations, which is really, really cool. From books, uh, to cartoons, now to rides and characters. I mean, it's a big deal. So uh, so not only uh, is your young one gonna enjoy it, but your, but your grandparents are gonna enjoy it. And finally, reason number three, the interactive queue. Now I'd say the average wait time for the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh is about a 30 minute wait. That's, that's, uh, that's average. Now whether it's 30 minutes in the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh or 120 minutes for the Seven Doors Mine Train, waiting in line can be tiresome, sometimes aggravating with little ones. But what's great about Winnie the Pooh is that it actually has an interactive queue where you can play with video screens and do little puzzles. There, there's a whole rabbit's garden area uh, that's interactive for the young ones so that way they can mess with fake vegetables growing and uh, play with little bees and honey pots. Not real live bees, but fake bees. They're plastic. Our next underrated attraction is Prince Charming Regal Carousel. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, they closed the gate. I asked the cast member if I could use the bench since there was no one that needed it. So I'm using the bench. Very excited. Never used the bench before. Okay, three things that make this underrated. Uh, reason number one, the carousel. The carousel is the thing that started it all, right? Walt Disney was sitting uh, on a park bench watching his uh, daughters uh, play uh, on, on a carousel and he was like, there's gotta be a way for this to be, you know, fun for all families. And that's, that's probably the idea for um, uh, Disneyland. So this is, I mean, this is what started it all. Uh, reason number two, view, the view of the castle. No matter what time of day, look at this. Yeah. I mean, that's just gorgeous. Reason number three, you never know who you're gonna find on the carousel. Sometimes if it's not super busy or for something special, the princesses might come out of Princess Fairy Tale Hall and I don't know, hop on a horse, go for a quick uh, carousel ride. It's happened, I've seen it multiple times. So you never know who you're gonna find. After you're done on the carousel, you know, and you're like, you know what? I'm a little dizzy. I need to sit down for a bit. Uh, our next underrated attraction would be uh, 
Philhar Magic. This is my relaxed dance. Reason number one. Just like you would attend the Philharmonic concert for its music, you're attending the Philhar Magic for its music as well. It's some of your favorite songs. We're talking about a whole new world. We're talking about Be Our Guest. We're talking about Un Poco Loco. The list goes on. Is it a sing-along? No. But, I mean, no one's saying you can't sing along. Reason number two, it is a 3D show, but it's more of a 4D show because you are going to get some water effects. Uh, you're going to get some air effects. You're going to get some smell-o-vision. And there's even an animatronic. Reason number three, I truly believe there's like, uh, you know, you do get transported to like a different situation. Hear me out. You're in this beautiful theater. I mean, and the theater is stunning in there. Uh, I once sang at a wedding inside of Philhar Magic. I mean... Yes, someone did get married inside of Filler Magic, but it is gorgeous. But you're in this beautiful theater, and then all of a sudden, the the proscenium to the stage just vanishes because the make, the sorcerer hat made it made, made it happen. This one small screen is now 180 degrees surrounding you. Uh, it, it you really feel like you are in a completely different theater. I like it. I like this a lot. I just saw the list, and I'm so excited to talk about one of my personal favorites, specifically because I think it checks off all the boxes for a perfect Disney experience. Specifically, I'm talking about Enchanted Tales with Belle. Enchanted Tales with Belle is a walkthrough experience. I'm not, I'm not gonna call it a meet and greet. I'm not gonna call it a show because I, I think that would cheapen it. Basically, upon your arrival, you enter Belle's cottage and then you are magically transported through a magic mirror. Back in time to when Belle and Beast first fell in love, you're, you're transported into the castle and then you reenact the story of Beauty and the Beast with Lumiere for Belle. Reason number one, this is underrated, is because of the interactive experience. Once you've been transported through the magic mirror, uh, the wardrobe, she tells you that we have to put on basically a reenactment, a play for Belle, a surprise for Belle, uh, and it's basically a retelling of, of how her and the beast met. But with the help of Lumiere, they, you reenact the story, they give you little quick lines to say. There's a great moment where everybody kind of sings Be Our Guest around the room, and then at the very end, you get to take a picture with Belle, and that's the meet and greet of the experience. Reason number two is the animatronic puppeteer. Hold on. Spoiler alert for anybody who doesn't want to know the magic. All right, I've waited long enough. While Lumiere itself might be somewhat of an animatronic, the actual animatronic is hidden behind Lumiere. And just like a puppeteer would control the hands of, uh, of a hand and rod puppet, where you, you know the, the rods like you would see on Sesame Street, an animatronic puppeteer behind Lumiere is controlling his hands. The movement is so fluid, it's a really, for as small as the animatronic is, it is one of the best animatronics. And yes, the projection face is there, but I think the movement is so fluid, it's fun, so lifelike, and I, I love this animatronic. And finally, the last and most, I think, important reason this is underrated, where the pre-show, one of the best pre-shows, I think, in all of Disney World. Why? It's the special effect, the magic mirror. Now, what looks just like a mirror on one side of the room, after, after, after saying some magic words, it opens up into a doorway. There are, uh, with projections and uh, some sort of mechanics, the reflective mirror literally opens up to, into a doorway that you have to step through in order to continue the rest of the experience. This is definitely not something I would miss on your next trip, especially if you love Beauty and the Beast, and especially if you love good storytelling. Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid is where you take a slow-moving clamshell vehicle under the sea to visit Ariel and her friends in a musical retelling of this classic tale. So reason number one this is underrated, it's the projections that make you feel like you're actually going down under the sea. This is an Omnimover attraction, which means uh, the track just continuously goes around. Basically, you have to hop on the attraction as it's still moving, and you have to hop off the attraction as it's still moving. But what's great is that the ride vehicles, the clamshells, turn around to show you exactly what they want you to see. And right at the beginning of the attraction, in front of you, there's a projection on the clamshell in front of you that looks like water is rising. It's a, it's a simple storytelling transition, just used for the projections, but it's done really well, and it definitely sets the tone for the rest of the attraction. Reason number two, I'm gonna talk about the queue again. There's an actual animatronic inside of the queue. First off, the whole story is narrated by Scuttle. Don't worry, he gets, he gets, it, he gets everything right. It's not, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be a weird story. But there is a Scuttle animatronic in the queue, talking to guests, talking about all of his findings. Uh, and now, oftentimes, you're not gonna find an animatronic in the queue. 
At number three, because conflict is needed for storytelling, the villain representation, the larger than life Ursula animatronic. Uh, when I tell you first time I saw it, I was like, okay, girl, you scary. Ursula has a whole scene dedicated to just her and of course, an amazing villain song for unfortunate souls. Truly, she's extremely lifelike. Uh, the movements are fluid. She is looming, she is evil, and she will haunt your dreams. What's up, Dumbo the Flying Elephant? Now, surprisingly, you were submitted by uh, a lot of people on AllersNet and uh, on social media as an underrated attraction here at Magic Kingdom. Don't turn your back on me, Timothy. Okay, well, hey, don't show me that either. Dumbo is a Dumbo-style attraction. Apparently, the correct terminology for this attraction is it's called a flat ride because it sits flat on the ground and everything on it goes up. Why isn't it called an upride? I don't know. Now, why is this underrated? Well, I'll tell you. These classic Disney rides, they tend to be underappreciated, but we're not about that today. We are appreciating you today. Reason number one, just like the Mad Tea Party, this, this is what you see in all the commercials. Who doesn't want to live out their 90-year-old fantasy? This is what Disney's all about, taking an incredible uh, intellectual property such as Dumbo and, and turning it into something that everybody can enjoy. Reason number two, because there are two of them. When they did the Dumbo update, they did add a whole second system. Now, typically, if you're looking at it, the right side is used for standby and the left side is used for lightning lane. They do spin opposite each other, which when they're both going, it, ma uh, it makes for a very cool picture. And finally, the third reason that makes this underrated is not even the attraction itself. It's what's in there. Inside of Dumbo, there is an actual play area where if you've been waiting in line for a little bit of time and I say a little bit of time because usually it's not a big wait there's kind of like a little jungle gym area uh, you, you know obstacle course areas that kids can climb through it's a great way for kiddos to burn off some energy to uh, step out of line to, to trick their mind into doing something just a little bit different if they've been waiting in line for a long time I mean I, if I if I could still fit in one I would play in there we've made it to the riverboat landing for our next uh, underrated attraction the Liberty Square Riverboat, also known as the Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell Riverboat is a steam-powered riverboat that literally travels around the rivers of America, all the way around Tom Sawyer Island and back, where you're going to see some unique views of the Magic Kingdom, of frontier land of Tom Sawyer Island, and even behind Tom Sawyer Island, where you're going to see some um, interesting scenescapes. Now, the boat does depart every hour and half hour. But it is approximately a 20 minute boat ride around Tom Sawyer Island. It is slow moving. Reason number one, underrated. Views you're not gonna see literally anywhere else. First things first, it is a three story boat, uh, which means if you're on the top floor, you're gonna be pretty high up and you're gonna be able to see uh, frontier land from a brand new perspective, Tom Sawyer Island from a brand new perspective, and all the way in the back, uh, they've got some extra added story elements that you can also see on the Walt Disney World Railroad, which we'll talk about later. Second reason it's underrated is because of the, well, this is more of a tip than anything else, of the secret room. As soon as you go into the riverboat on the second floor, make a left, and uh, I will say sometimes it is closed depending on uh, different circumstances, but nine times out of 10, it's always open. There are these great benches, uh, like, like, like comfortable benches, plenty of things to look at. Uh, it's covered, it's cool in there, it's quiet. Uh, it's definitely a place that, you know, for some reason, if you're like, I just need to get away from the crowds, hop on the Liberty Bell Riverboat for 20 minutes, sit in that quiet room, eat, eat a snack, drink some water, enjoy your time. And finally, the third reason this is underrated, moose. Yep, there's a lot of moose all around Tom Sawyer Island. And I didn't know that. Did you know moose are native? To, to Tom Sawyer Island Magic Kingdom. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Come for the boat, stay for the moose. Why is it always when I walk in front of the Hall of Presidents, I always shudder? All right, the last to leave challenge. Check it out on the channel. It was fun and also a lot. A surprise addition to the 33 uh, list of underrated attractions is the Hall of Presidents. The Hall of Presidents is about a 30 minute show and it's a celebration of Liberty's leaders. We're talking about presidents, the founding fathers, uh, how it all started and where it is today. Mostly told via movie until all of a sudden, every single president is revealed in animatronic form, which is pretty cool. Reason one, it's underrated. Walt Disney was a 
was a America nut. He loved history, the presidents. He did a lot for uh, the war. That's why one of his very first animatronics after the birds was Abraham Lincoln. Great moments uh, with Mr. Lincoln, which you can still find over in Disneyland. So because he loved presidents and history so much, his whole attraction is dedicated to Walt Disney. Number two, and yes, I am gonna I'm gonna pull this car for the Hall of Presidents, specifically the Hall of Presidents. It's a long, dark 30 minute show. It is a great place to rest. And sure, enjoy the show. I'm not saying go in there and actively fall asleep. But what I am saying though, is that if you need great air conditioning, great uh, com comfortable seats, uh, a dark place, uh, and you just need to just turn off for a second, not saying I gotta shut your eyes. I'm just saying, turn off. The Hall of Presidents is a great place to do it. There's no judgment here. And number three, yes, the scene with all the presidents in their animatronic form, very cool. However, next time, look behind it. Look behind all the presidents. A really cool storytelling detail is the White House actually changes behind the presidents. So when they're introducing George Washington, uh, John Adams, you know, Abraham Lincoln, you know, the, the, uh, the White House looks like it did back then. And then as uh, the presidents, when they move forward in time, the White House kind of fades and changes and, and morphs into what it looked like at that time. That part is underrated because nobody talks about it. But it's a really, it's good storytelling. Disney, good, good job. Now we're talking about the Country Bear Jamboree. The Country Bear Jamboree is a wild and wooly good time. Haha, <laughs> but um where your favorite country bears are putting on a cabaret for you and everybody here at the Magic Kingdom. It's about a 10 minute animatronic show that does play continuously. I mean, reason number one it's underrated uh, is because you should catch it while it's still here. And here's what I mean by that. Recently at D23 that they announced the country bears was changing. The country bear songs that you used to know and love uh, are, are going away for the foreseeable future. And they're disnifying it up. They're, they're putting, uh, like, you know, I think different bear songs, like the bear necessities, but done in like their bluegrass, Western kind of way. Number two, uh, and I'm gonna talk about the show in its current state, not the new state. The songs are, in a word, iconic. These probably aren't songs that uh, you know, but they sure pack a punch. And a lot of it does go over the kids' heads. Uh, they just think they're uh, hearing, a, hearing a good song. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very well. He just wanted to come over and say hello. Hi. Yo. See, even Liverlips knows. Anyway, the songs. We're talking uh, Blood on the Saddle. Blood on the Saddle by uh, the one, the only Big Al. Another great song by Triplets, All the Guys That Turn Me On, Turn Me Down. Yeah, that's a song that happens here as well. Uh, so, really fun, iconic songs that, um, well, they belong here at the Country Bear Jamboree. That's what I think. Last reason I think this is underrated is because um, of its staying power. Hear me out. The first time I saw the Country Bear Jamboree, I was a kid and I was like, this is singing bears, amazing. As an adult, literally just had me laughing. Some of those things you didn't get as a kid, but you do now as an adult. And I think it just um, makes it even better. Now, Tom Sawyer Island is a literal island that is based off of the stories of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. There are different parts of the land that are inspired by uh, moments of those stories, like Aunt Polly's, the caves, uh, the fort. Reason number one it's underrated is because the only way to get to and from Tom Sawyer Island is by literal watercraft. You get on a, like uh, this, what looks like a log raft and uh, that's the only way on or off the island is by getting on a log raft. It is literally being driven by the cast members. These are actual boats, which I think is pretty cool and speaks to the uh, authenticity of Tom Sawyer Island. Reason number two it's underrated, one of the scarier things in Magic Kingdom, the caves. They are dark. It is enclosed spaces, uneven ground. Uh, you are uh, sometimes dead silent. These caves are spooky but I love them. It's the, it, what, one of my favorite parts of Tom Sawyer Island is going through the caves. The third thing I wanna say about Tom Sawyer Island, why it's underrated, is it is a great spot. We, we, we preach this on the channel. It's a great place for quiet and to get away from the crowd. There are multiple places all over Tom Sawyer Island where you're able to just uh, find a nice picnic table, 
find a nice bench, always peaceful. There's lush greenery, there's rushing waters. Uh, lush and rush, Tom Sawyer Island. Next up, Enchanted Tiki Room. The Enchanted Tiki Room is about a 10 minute animatronic show where the entire room comes to life and you're serenaded by the birds, the tikis, the plants, everything around you becomes a whole musical celebration. All right, this is an easy one. Let's get into it. Number one, Walt Disney animatronics started with these birds. These birds were some of the very first animatronics. These birds walked so Kylo Ren could fight. I just think it's a really cool piece of history and to see a, a, a classic Disney attraction to know that Walt Disney, uh, the man himself, had a hand in creating uh, something like this. Reason number two, this is actually the OG version. There have been a couple different incarnations. In fact, uh, there are different versions of Enchanted Tiki Room all over the world. Uh, there is a, there's a Stitch uh, Enchanted Tiki Room where uh, Stitch, he's kind of the main character. He's in the center of the room. It's a whole luau celebration. Before this, there was uh, Enchanted Tiki Room under new management. Uh, where Zazu and Iago uh, basically uh, they ran the joint and uh, that was its own situation so to know that you're seeing uh, uh, the original version of the Enchanted Room that, that feels like a, that feels like a bigger deal finally the third reason it's underrated is probably a personal reason but if you're anything like me and you love vacations uh, the window, there are four windows in the Enchanted Tiki Room, and at each window has, the, has this view of the ocean and the volcano. At one point it rains, and I like to sit as close to that window as possible. Sometimes I don't even watch the show. Sometimes I'll just stare at that window and go, hmm, what it must be like to be on vacation right now. The Walt Disney World Railroad. The Walt Disney World Railroad is a train that takes you all around uh, Disney World, literally the perimeter of uh, Disney World. While it is considered an attraction, it is pretty much a, a mode of transportation to get you from point A to point B. All right, reason number one, and yes, it is a mode of transportation, but there are some really interesting things you can actually see on the Walt Disney World Railroad. Similar to the things you can actually see on the Liberty Bell Riverboat. So you're gonna see uh, some of the Native American scenescapes, uh, also the moose, at one point, it looks as if we have exited the park because you're going on the outskirts of the park. It feels as if you've exited the park because you've got a beautiful view of the monorail and the contemporary. One of my favorite things, and uh, the second reason why it's underrated, is because of the soundtrack. It's a pretty interesting uh, and unique uh, soundtrack where you hear a narrator and you'll also hear some characters. Uh, for example, when you're going into Fantasyland, there was a really interesting conversation between <laughs> Uh, Peter Pan and Tank and, and, and another character. And finally, Walter Elias Disney loved trains. Like he had toy models and, and, and he built these, these tiny trains in his backyard. I mean, he was, he, was tr he was train crazy. Until finally he was like, you know what? No, if I'm gonna have my own theme park, it's gonna have a train. And sure enough, that's, uh, that's how, the, you know, over in Disneyland, that's how they have their train over there. They brought it over here to Walt Disney World. Uh, and because of Walt Disney, I feel like that makes it underrated. Muppet Vision 3D is a 3D show inspired by the classic Jim Henson Muppets. And these Muppets are trying to show you that they are the best at what they do 3D style. Whether it be 3D stand-up comedy or a 3D 90-second patriotic tribute, the Muppets are back at it and wackier than ever. First thing that makes this an underrated attraction, guys, it's the Muppets. Sure, the Muppets weren't originally Disney, but neither was Star Wars, neither was Pandora, and now the Muppets are a staple at Disney. Number two, in the pre-show room. There's a really fun uh, video that plays while you're waiting. Gonzo duplicates into three. Rizzo puts on a Mickey Mouse costume. It's a lot of fun, but really, there are some great Easter eggs hidden within that pre-show room. One of our favorites is a net full of Jello. A net full of Jello was an original Mouseketeer, and in honor of her, they made a net full of Jello, like jiggly Jello. Also within the pre-show room, you can find uh, one of the patriotic puppets that they used in the finale in the actual making of Muppet Vision 3D. And third, it's secretly live entertainment. Because hashtag live entertainment is important. I mean, you're just sitting enjoying Muppet Vision 3D, a, a, a pretty funny, uh, great Muppet-inspired show, and then all of a sudden, Sweetums, actual Sweetums, comes out and he's real. He's actually there in front of you. And so the fact that they incorporated live entertainment into a 3D show, I think was brilliant, super uh, super fun, super clever, which is why this attraction all around is underrated. 
Also over at Hollywood Studios, Walt Disney Presents. Walt Disney Presents is a walkthrough experience dedicated to Walt Disney himself. It's basically a museum or an exhibit dedicated to Walt Disney, starting at his early years all the way until now. Number one, let's just get this out of the way. It's basically a shrine to Walt Disney himself. I say this in almost any video uh, that I'm in when we're at Walt Disney Presents. Yes, Walt Disney may have said it all started with a mouse. However, someone had to create that mouse. It did start with Walt Disney himself. So it's always important, I believe, to pay uh, tribute to that. Number two, yeah, it is an exhibit, lots of cool artifacts, but also all the way in the back of uh, Walt Disney Presents, there is a meet and greet. Now that meet and greet does rotate uh, for the past couple months, ever since uh, the live action Little Mermaid came out. It has been the live action Little Mermaid. And number three, after you said hi to the Little Mermaid, grab yourself some tissues and head to the very back to the Walt Disney uh, Theater where they're playing One Man's Dream. And that is about a 10 minute film all about Walt Disney himself, narrated by the one, the only, the amazing Julie Andrews. I can't believe Fry is gonna make me say this one, but alien swirling saucers. The first thing that makes this attraction underrated is the music. Now, alien swirling saucers is in Toy Story Land where you are apparently trucking down to the size of a toy, but that means that the music that you're hearing is also gonna be, uh, I, you know, toy based. And what I mean by that, all the songs on Aliens Rolling Saucers, they've all got this electronic toy sounding vibe. And it really brings the whole thing together, makes you feel like you have definitely trekking down to the size of a toy. Second thing, it is very family friendly. This is an attraction that you'd probably see at a carnival. It's just a better themed carnival attraction because of Toy Story. It's not too thrilling. I think it's a great attraction for everybody. I'd equate it to something like a Mad Tea Party with just a little more pull. Number three, I don't know, I guess the aliens are cute. Uh, super cute aliens, underrated, nailed it. Made it to Epcot. First up, the seas with Nemo and friends. Where surprisingly you hop into another clamshell, you dive deep into the ocean uh, for a retelling of Pixar's Finding Nemo. Number one makes this underrated is the scene where the big monster fish, I forget what it's called, but it's got the light in front uh, where he's, ch he's chasing uh, Dory and Marlin. Big monster fish is on this robotic arm and uh, it's, the, it's the only time I think on this attraction where the fish are moving so fluidly. Really cool moment. Now the Seas with Nemo and Friends, the dark ride, that's just part one of the Seas with Nemo and Friends. This brings me to number two of why this is underrated. This whole building is one big aquarium. Apparently, it's the second largest in the country, second to Georgia. In fact, at the very end of the dark ride, uh, they actually merged both worlds. They basically put the characters of Finding Nemo, like the, their animated versions, inside of the aquarium. Uh, they're singing the big blue, uh, in the big blue world, uh, which is from Finding Nemo the Musical. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but then after that, you can get off the dark ride and see manatees and uh, see fish. I mean, it's a huge aquarium inside. It's awesome. And finally, number three, also in the seas with Nemo and friends, because again, we're looping this all into one big attraction, is Turtle Talk with Crush. Turtle Talk with Crush is a 10 minute show where you can actually interact with Crush, the sea turtle, from Finding Nemo. Basically, you're in a human tank, that's what he calls it, and you could ask him questions about what it's like to be a sea turtle, or how many kids does he have? It's, it's a whole Q&A with Crush. It's very funny, you might see some surprise characters. Every time I've been, it's been different every time which uh, is always a, a plus for repeatability factor. Call me crazy, but I'm gonna call this an underrated pavilion, just in general. Oh no, not this, this. The land is actually a staple here in Epcot. It houses a bunch of different attractions. Uh, the main e-ticket attraction that you would see, or that I guess you would, the big reason you'd come here in general, for most people who aren't us, would be Soren, which is a hang gliding simulator attraction. Uh, that's when I say hang gliding, that sounds thrilling. It's more peaceful than thrilling. But inside of the land, you're also going to find Garden Grill, which is a rotating restaurant. It's a character dining experience. Sunshine Seasons, which is a quick service location. But there are two other attractions in here that are definitely underrated. And for this first one, I know my girl Emma is going to be very excited about it. This first one we're talking about is Awesome Planet. Uh, trust me, I'm shocked at this one as well. Awesome Planet is a 10 minute movie about planet Earth narrated by Ty Burrell. You would know Ty Burrell as uh, Phil Dunphy uh, from Modern Family. What makes him narrating this even more funny is that he's basically pretending to be a real estate agent selling you planet Earth. 
Real quick, here are the three things that make this underrated. Number one, obvious, Ty Burrell. Ty Burrell is a hilarious actor. He does a really good job narrating this. I think without him, it'd be kind of boring. Number two, it is surprisingly educational. I'll give it that. Uh, typically, you know, I'm not like, come to Disney to learn things, but it is Epcot. Global warming is important, so I'm like, let's just watch a video on Ty Burrell and learn something today. Education. Number three is that it's a quick escape. If you need a quick escape, you sit in a dark theater for 10 minutes just to just to reset and watch something, and just literally pop into Awesome Planet for 12 minutes, reset, call it a day, move, move on. All right. Now, you will hear us always talk about this ride on this channel. Over the years, it's become a Disney fan favorite, but it is Living With The Land boat ride. Living With The Land is a slow-moving boat ride. It's, it's a narrated boat tour, actually, where you travel through three distinct ecosystems before visiting experimental greenhouses and agriculture areas. We can go on this ride a million times and still, and we'd still be okay with it. Uh, but let's get into why it's, why it's underrated. Number one, I feel like this attraction has similar vibes to the People Mover, where it's relaxing. I would be lying if I told you that I didn't have this soundtrack on a sleep playlist. When I can't sleep, play it and then quickly fall asleep. And it is very relaxing. The music, the music is calming. It's quiet. It's, it's just like the vibes are amazing. Number two, you actually do learn a lot. Again, Epcot, you're gonna learn some stuff. But you do visit these greenhouses where Epcot is currently growing produce and you're learning how the future farmers of America are, are yeah, developing safer crops and uh, for, you know, for world hunger and, uh, and you know, getting rid of the poisons and all those kinds of things. So you are learning some cool stuff uh, and you are and you're visiting greenhouses that is actually growing fruits and vegetables and herbs and spices, which brings me to number three. They're not just growing these herbs and then just like throwing them away. They're not just growing these cucumbers and saying, uh, well, I guess we'll replace it with a new cucumber. No, the, this food that they're growing, they're actually using here at Epcot. And you can even see what food that they're using, uh, especially during the festivals, because there are little like plaques next to uh, things that they're using saying, this food is currently being used uh, over in the Greece booth for the Food and Wine Festival because of I, I, cumin, I don't, I don't know. But you get the point. This, this one was submitted by you guys. Uh, which is interesting. It's an interesting take. You said another underrated ride here uh, on my list of 33 here at Epcot is Journey into Imagination. Let's get into it. Journey into Imagination with Figment is a slow moving dark ride where you are welcomed into the Imagination Institute and you explore the five senses until a mischievous dragon gets into the mix and he welcomes you to his own open house to explore those senses instead the sense of imagination. And here are three things that I think makes this very controversial ride underrated. Don't come at me. I know a lot of people don't like this ride anymore, but I do believe that there are some redeeming qualities. So let's talk about it. First things first, I want to shout out all the Easter eggs, the Easter eggs in the queue uh, and, in, and even in the ride itself. Because Epcot has been around since the 80s, we've seen lots of different versions of Journey into Imagination, different attractions like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, yada, yada, yada. But you can find uh, Easter eggs to some of Disney's favorite scientists. For example, you can see uh, Rick Moranis from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids uh, in, a big, in a big poster that's like dedicated to him. Uh, you see Robin Williams because of Flubber. Uh, and of course, Eric Idle, because he is the host of Journey to Imagination, along with Figment. And there are even these doors in the queue, as well as the ride, that behind them, you know, you can see green and like green balls jumping around. That's supposed to be like Flubber, right? Uh, even uh, there's the Dream Lab, where someone is, uh, so you can hear someone sleeping, which, which actually is a nod to Dream Finder, which is a previous incarnation of Journey to uh, um, Imagination. Number two, I'm just going to talk about my favorite part of the, of the ride, because, uh, it's the most figmenty or imagination-esque part of it all. And that's when Figment welcomes everybody into his own open house and, the, and it's an upside down house. So basically you can see a toilet flush above you and you can see the driveway, but the truck is upside down. Everything is this really highlighty colors. And on the TV inside of Figment's house, uh, there's an original Figment cartoon in that TV uh, from the previous attraction. So I think that's pretty cool too. And finally, let's just talk about the dragon in the room. 
see what I did there. Figment the Purple Dragon is an Epcot staple. I would consider him one of the mascots of Epcot, of Disney in general. And yes, he's gone through many different incarnations over the years. He actually has this very own meet and greet here in the Imagination Pavilion, which, I mean, that makes Figment fans very happy. People love Figment. I don't think they love the ride, but they love Figment. I did not realize this was gonna turn into such a controversial video. However, controversy is my middle name. This next underrated attraction is Mission Space, but not all of Mission Space. We're talking green mission only. Mission Space is a motion simulator attraction, but the whole idea is that you're training to go to space, you get into a cockpit, and it actually simulates space travel. Remember, we're talking about green mission only. Well, it's important to know that there are two sides to Mission Space. There's orange, which is the more intense side. Lots of G-force. How the attraction works, it's actually on a centrifuge, which means uh, it spins around really, really quickly to simulate you being uh, blasted off into space. The orange side is very intense. Green Mission, however, is just a flight around planet Earth, and it's more of a, um, it's Mission Space Light. Now, people often say if you're gonna do Mission Space, I mean, and I used to be one of these people, let's not get it twisted, that if you're gonna do Mission Space, you might as well just do Mission Space and do a side orange. But literally recently, uh, I have changed my ways, and I truly believe Green Mission is is like a space version of Soren, which I know that's a that's a leap and a skip and a jump, but just go with me on it. All right, number one. Disney actually worked with NASA to make this as realistic as possible. And yes, that is true of both sides, Orange Mission and Green Mission, but I mean, that's still a pretty fantastic detail. I mean, if NASA's gonna say, you know what, Disney, let's put together something that actually makes you feel like you're blasting off into space. I mean, like, good for you. Let's do it to it. Number two, everybody gets kind of assigned a role, which, I think adds to the immersive element. You can be one of four roles, uh, navigator, engineer, commander, or pilot, and you each have two tasks that you have to complete throughout your mission. Now, spoiler alert, if for some reason uh, you only have three people because there are four people in, in, a, in a cockpit at a time and you can't reach a button or, or something doesn't happen, uh, autopilot will engage and then they'll figure that part out. Unlike Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, that's more of a video game where this is more of a motion simulator attraction with some cool uh, storytelling elements. And number three, I'm telling you, you've just got to trust me. If you get queasy, you get nauseous, ride green over orange. That's why it's underrated, because it's giving you a second option saying, hey, if this ride is too intense, if this is a very similar version of this attraction, just, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna vom. And that's okay. Grand Fiesta Tour. Let's go. The Grand Fiesta Tour is a slow moving boat ride where you are desperately trying to find Donald because the three caballeros, they have a performance happening in Mexico City, but Donald is just enjoying Mexico and is nowhere to be found. So Jose and Panchito, we gotta help him out guys. Number one, this might be kind of a cheat, but getting a margarita before going on a slow moving boat ride, that seems like the thing to do. La Cava del Tequila is the tequila bar in the Mexico Pavilion where they have great margaritas. It is a full bar, you can get any kind of uh, beverage there, but really their specialty is tequila. And it just feels like classic Epcot. Grabbing a margarita and then going on the Grand Fiesta tour leads me to number two. The first part of the attraction, you go in front of this gorgeous temple and you actually are on the outside of the restaurant in the Mexico Pavilion. And number three, well, spoiler alert, Jose and Panchito, they do find Donald and they do put on the concert, but they have this really fun three caballero animatronic scene at the very end where they're singing the three caballeros. It's a good time. And it wraps the whole thing up in this perfect little bow, making the Grand Fiesta Tour a must-do attraction if you're visiting Mexico. Don't forget about the margarita. All right, okay, we've made it to the American Pavilion. This is the American Adventure. Disney's epic theatrical event on stage and screen. The American Adventure is a 30 to 35 minute animatronic show all about America, how it started, all of the history told in a very theatrical way, all leading up to present day. Let's talk about why it's underrated. Number one, the pre-show. The pre-show being the Voices of Liberty. The Voices of Liberty is an acapella choir a group, if you will. And saying an acapella group, I feel like cheapens it a tad. They're, they're more than that. It's an Americana vocalist group. You'll hear them sing everything to This Land Is Your Land, to even things like To Dream the Impossible Dream, from Man of La Mancha, uh, a lot of great uh, American uh, songs. 
in this really beautiful choral arrangement. Uh, the sopranos are just like soaring, the tenors are soaring, the basses are just, it's, the basses are, are, are holding down the fort, uh, even the baritones, they're hitting all those seven, just brilliant, good stuff. Number two, it is actually impressive, the American Adventure, uh, all of the animatronics, uh, because it is really a high-tech show, surprisingly. I wanna see what happens underneath the stage, you know what I mean? Because they come up, they go down, they've gotta move probably somewhere else for another one to come in place, and then that one has to move back because there's only so much space. Uh, but it is kind of technologically advanced for when it first opened for back in the day, so. Um, uh, seeing it now, I can still have some appreciation for it. And third, I'm gonna say it for the second time, the only time I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it, I said it for Hall of Presidents, but if it's hot, it's a long show, it's dark, if you need, if you need a moment. I'm not saying go in there to sleep, I'm saying that resting is inevitable, whether your eyes are shut or not. So it's a good, it's a good place of solid, solitude and rest. You didn't hear me say that though. Now, while I love this one, this attraction is very controversial because it is definitely tough to be a bug. It's tough to be a bug is a 3D show actually inside of the Tree of Life, the park's icon, inspired by Pixar's A Bug's Life. Number one, it's not as family friendly as everybody thinks it is. Yes, that's one of my reasons why it's underrated. Sometimes it is hard to find those thrilling, uh, scary things at Disney World. And Animal Kingdom delivers with uh, definitely the creepy crawlies when it comes to it's tough to be a bug. We're talking extreme darkness, lots of fog, spiders falling from the sky. I mean, it gets real. And don't even get me started on the larger than life hopper animatronic. Number two, it actually does take place inside the Tree of Life. It's not, uh, you know, a secondary stage attached to the Tree of Life. It literally takes place inside. The Tree of Life is the park's icon. And the third underrated part is at the very end of the show, the bugs exit the theater and you can actually feel them underneath your butt. It tickles, it's funny. Next up, underrated and this is again, probably controversial, Cali River Rapids. Cali River Rapids is a raft ride where you will get soaked, where you go through the jungles of Asia only to find that the jungles are being met with deforestation and devastation. It's not good, it's not a pretty picture. One of my three things that make this attraction underrated, as I just mentioned, you will get soaked. I have yet to be on that attraction without walking off just soaked from head to toe. So I'd probably save it for later on in the day when it's the most hot or so you don't have to walk around in wet denim. Number two, there is only one drop, which is a little disappointing. However, that one drop is gnarly. You are going fast and furious down that one hill. And yes, that is the hill that's gonna get you get soaked. So we'll call that one hill the best part about Cali River Rapids because then after that, it's just, it's just kind of a, a chill ride. And finally, the third thing that makes this underrated, I'm gonna call them the revenge elephants. These revenge elephants are actually located at the end of the ride where guests who are on the bridge watching you, they can press buttons and they can squirt you right after you've already been soaked from the giant hill. But don't worry, after you get off the ride, you'll have your turn. All right, we'll make this one quick. Triceratops spin. It's a Dumbo style attraction where you hop into a Triceratops and you fly because dinosaurs fly now. This is what we're learning, it's canon. First thing that makes this uh, underrated and I really, I wish this could be one, two and three because it is, in my, in my opinion, the best part of Triceratops spin is the music. Dinoland USA, which is reportedly uh, going away soon according to uh, D23. However, Dinoland USA has some of the best music. We're talking Earth, Wind & Fire, James Brown, Smash Mouth. It's, it's some good stuff. And yeah, they've got that music rocking during Triceratops Spin. Number two, if you have larger families, specifically with families who are traveling with three or more people, as opposed to Dumbo, which is just a two-seater, Triceratops Spin is actually a four-seater. In the front row, you decide whether you go up or down. In the back row, you decide whether you tilt forward or backwards. So, I mean, you, you, the more the merrier on this Triceratops. The third reason it's underrated, Triceratops are flying. They've got stars underneath them. Where else are you gonna find Triceratops with flying stars? Also in Animal Kingdom, the Wildlife Express. The Wildlife Express is literally just a train to get you from point A to point B. Point A being Africa, point B being Rafiki's Planet Watch. Number one why it's underrated, the train is actually really uniquely themed. It's supposed to give you that old train vibe uh, and traveling through 
Africa and the entire thing kind of rocks back uh, back and forth. It's not just rickety tracks. It's actually designed to do that to give you the feel that you are on an old style train. Number two, it's literally the only way to get to Rafiki's Planet Watch if you want to do the animation experience or pets and animals in the affection section, which that still needs a new name. And three, it's the only place you can see some backstage areas where they're taking care of the animals. You can see behind the scenes of the safari, of the Kilimanjaro safari attraction, because you are on your way to Rafiki's Planet Watch where they uh, teach you about conservation. They even have some of their vet clinics over there uh, that, that, that take care of the animals. Over in Pandora, the Navi River Journey. Journey. This is actually another slow moving boat ride that takes you through the jungles of Pandora, or in this case, the Valley of Moara. Couple reasons why this is underrated. One, no one really understands the backstory of what this is supposed to be. Trust me, I'm on that train. I didn't for a long time until I did more research. And Navi River Journey is supposed to be the Kilimanjaro Safari of Pandora. It's supposed to be a safari on Pandora, but on a boat, and knowing that makes me have a little more respect for it. Number two, at the end of the attraction, the Shaman of Song sits there singing her, well, song, and it's insane how lifelike she is. The movement, the fluidity, the scale, it's really well done and I'm always impressed. And number three, just for fun, I think this is underrated. I think the leaping frogs that are above you in the middle of the attraction is a really cool effect. The way that the, these projections of frogs jump from leaf to leaf, but when they jump and they land, the leaf moves. I, I, that's pretty impressive to me. And we are wrapping up our Animal Kingdom underrated attractions with Dinosaur. Yes, surprisingly, this is underrated. No matter how much we rate it, we rate it hard. People don't appreciate the value of what is Dinosaur. And yes, that means we also might say goodbye to Dinosaur as Dinoland USA goes away. Dinosaur itself might go away as well to make way for, well, maybe Indiana Jones, who knows? The Dinosaur is a thrilling dark ride attraction where you travel back in time to rescue a dinosaur, but you get chased by one instead. Number one, why this is underrated? This ride is a scary. You are in total darkness for 80% of the time. The only time you get to see things is when a dinosaur is trying to eat you, loudly. There aren't enough scary attractions, in my personal opinion. I love the storytelling of slow-moving dark rides, but I'm also not afraid of some fast-paced stories. Number two, you gotta love the pre-show, Dr. Seeker and Felicia Rashad. The story goes, Dr. Seeker is a paleontologist working at the Dino Institute. He wants to travel back in time to get a dinosaur, but Felicia Rashad's like, nah, nah. I love what celebrities make guest appearances in theme park attractions. Glenn Close and Terry Crews over at uh, Cosmic Rewind, hello. And number three, this goes out to my Disneylanders. It is actually a copy and paste of the track and ride vehicle for Indiana Jones over in Disneyland, which makes even more sense if they're planning on bringing Indiana Jones to Animal Kingdom in some capacity. I mean, the track is already there. The ride vehicle is already there. Hope you enjoyed all of the underrated attractions at all four parks. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch all four parks compete for love in The Bachelor. Bye.